a new report has emerged, one that paints a very clear picture concerning the future of crypto. You're going to want to listen up because it's telling a story of what we can expect in the coming year and how important it is to be paying attention to the crypto markets right now. Hot off the desk of one of the largest and most influential venture capital firms in crypto, a multi-billion dollar fund that has had their name on some of the biggest damn deals in the crypto space. So today, we are going to be looking at the Pantera Capital's aptly named Absence of Bad Things Report. Da, 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 da. Sounds pretty ominous, guys. Containing more than just excuses for what held revenue back in the last cycle, this report actually outlines what the biggest crypto billionaires really think about the current market cycle. You're going to want to hear this as always, follow the money because it will lead you to the truth. So let's dig in. First off, just who the heck is Pantera? Anyway, it's not the cool rock band from back in the day. It's important to know who they are before you realize what they have to say is actually worth listening to. So let me give you a quick rundown. Pantera became one of the first US institutional asset managers in the Web3 space before it was called Web3 back in the day, a decade ago in the blockchain world. Since then, Pantera has backed over 100 different blockchain companies and participated in more than 110 early stage token deals. Projects like One Inch, Alchemy, Arbitrum, Backed, Balancer, Brave, Circle, Cosmos, Coinbase, Filecoin, GuildFi, Injective, Kyber Network, MarginFi, Near, Oasis Labs, Polkadot, Ripple, Shapeshift, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You probably recognize a few of those names. They've been in it. You can check out their current portfolio anytime over on coinmarketcap.com or on their website. Now, Pantera took a massive 80% loss in 2022 during the collapse of FTX. Hit a lot of people hard. But by the end of the year, man, it's like they just got right back up, back to raising billions of dollars. You've probably heard something about someone out there wanting to buy the FTX Estates Solana tokens. Yeah, that's Pantera. They're the guys. We're going to fork out 250 million bucks for that. So when an influential firm like this with so much riding on crypto releases their basically, well, their blueprint for the next year, you kind of want to at least pay a little bit of attention to it. So Pantera begins by pointing out the absence of evil in the current market compared to 2022 obviously the worst is long over financial analysts cited that even if you go back 250 years you really can't find a worse year than 2022 <laughs> it was a bad one 2022 is their worst year of course for the classic 60 40 stock bond portfolio since the great depression it was crazy times. IPO proceeds raised were down 95% and the available number of deals went down by 85% from the previous year as a result of the crypto markets falling 70%. Yeah, I think we all felt that one pretty intensely. Reviewing some of the most catastrophic events in crypto from Mt. Gox to Silicon Valley Bank, nothing has been able to take Bitcoin down. The crypto markets just keep pushing forward, man. Oh, but these greedy a-holes sure keep on trying, don't they? And I'm sure they will. There will always be new leverage to unwind in the market. Anyway, there you go. A new unwritten rule for Bitcoin. Resistance to greedy a-holes. <laughs> Anyway, Pantera goes on to say that with the new regulatory framework brought on by the Bitcoin ETF, much of the uncertainty actually surrounding regulatory approval of blockchains in the past is no longer present. They cite how high profile cases with Ripple's native token XRP ruled as not a security and Grayscale's big win in their lawsuit against the SEC regarding their Bitcoin ETF application has helped to accelerate institutional adoption with the Bitcoin having now less than a month away. Blockchain's dial up to broadband moment is finally arriving. And that with all of Pantera's experience accumulated from the previous cycles, they think that we are now at the beginning of the fourth big cycle. And that with stocks back at record highs, they can invest in private markets again. And they think the next 18 to 24 months are probably going to be a strong bull market for crypto, especially 
for Bitcoin, the most neglected asset of our generation. It's not hard. It's not a hard truth to find that Bitcoin is kind of the most neglected asset in the world. Obviously, it's changing every day. But before we talk about that, it is shameless promotion time. <laughs> okay, but seriously, look, if you want to get a wealth of knowledge delivered straight to your inbox every single week, then me and the team at the Wealth Mastery Newsletter, we got you covered. We're spending 40 hours a week every week or more sometimes to make the best damn alpha pack newsletter in the cryptocurrency industry that we can deliver straight to your inbox. We've been doing it for four years now. We're going to do it for a lot more time in the future. We cover DeFi, airdrops, NFTs, altcoin charts, and much, much more. All the news that you need to stay up to date in the crypto market. You can sign up for free using the link down below in the description and join our 110,000 plus weekly readers. Check it out. Okay, now back to the story. So with all that said, Bitcoin, 60% larger than Visa, has 250% more daily trading volume than Apple, has 20% less annualized volatility than Tesla, and could be considered one of the sixth largest countries in the world with a population of more than 220 million, of course, on chain uh, users and wallets. And it was ignored and was exiled from the world's leading financial institutions for 10 years. It was a pariah. Would an ETF satisfy you? And the answer is no. The ETF was only meant to be a jumping off point, not the finish line. Calling Bitcoin a digital Fort Knox, the report goes on to point out that if Wall Street's financial system won't build for Bitcoin, then Bitcoin will have to build a financial system for itself. Where we see large populations like Latin America, Africa, Asia, you know, billions of people ideal places for global distribution of blockchain technology, of Bitcoin technology, how Bitcoin's popularity will grow into wanting more than just moving and storing our Bitcoin. Very interesting. But while Bitcoin is neglected as an asset, it's even more neglected as a technology. How Bitcoin's blessings are also its curse. So look, Resistance to change, this is a big thing for Bitcoin, it makes upgrading the network difficult. Its simple design makes it incompatible with the current financial market. And while the network has 100% uptime, completing a single transaction takes 10 minutes. But with technology, taproot, ordinals, BRC20 tokens being introduced, we've already reached the point of wanting more options for Bitcoin and more options are now available. As the fees market for Bitcoin already shows, Bitcoin average fees per transaction rose by 20x in 2023, driven by ordinal inscriptions with more layer two adoption, ETF approval, and of course, just a general mistrust well-founded, by the way, in centralized institutions from the previous cycle. Analysts are saying that Bitcoin has the potential to be a half trillion dollar opportunity. That if DeFi reaches Ethereum's proportions on Bitcoin, we could expect the total value of DeFi applications on the Bitcoin network to be worth $225 billion or 25% of uh, Bitcoin currently. So how? Well, over time, it could range between 72 billion and 450 billion, eight and 50 percent based on current numbers here, assuming no changes in Bitcoin's uh, current market cap, which obviously is going to go up. So that's to be considered. We have all these great experiments, of course, coming that are bringing the stuff stacks, the Lightning Network, optimistic rollups, ZK rollups, uh, sovereign rollups, discrete log contracts, a lot of new Protocols launching on Bitcoin. Bitcoin's age neglect may finally be coming to an end in this regard. Developers are paying attention. People are paying attention. Bitcoin, of course, will always be considered as digital gold, and many would still consider that as a primary value proposition is to be digital gold. But the idea of extending Bitcoin beyond being just a store of value is gaining traction in certain communities, and that can no longer be neglected. And good uh, long term is probably good for security and as it feeds the miners. It's all illustrated, of course, by the effectiveness of Ordinal's activity on Bitcoin. And with this comes new and exciting opportunities. And people love exciting opportunities. Get them excited about Bitcoin again. Now let's talk about opportunity. With increased interest in a novel way to use Bitcoin, Pantera has pointed out that Bitcoin as a settlement layer, of course, has enormous value creation potential, even if just a fraction of the $850 billion plus uh, capital base is deployed as 
liquidity in decentralized finance applications. Of course, now it's over a trillion dollars with the current price rally. A conversation we need to have tier two is about the future of Bitcoin as both money and as a technology. You see, a big factor playing into this opportunity for Bitcoin is that after the collapse of the FTX uh, exchange, obviously trust and centralized exchanges took a major hit, very well foundedly, of course. The industry still faces some of the negative reverberations from that even today. But traders have moved to decentralized trading venues at an increasing rate because the user experience has never been better. And this is a place where asset custody is more secure and order books are actually more transparent, thus bringing decentralized perpetual markets and other financial instruments that are uh, maybe not previously available on Bitcoin to be now available. So you match these new opportunities beyond just, again, a simple store value, buy and hold your Bitcoin, never do anything with it. You have the Bitcoin halving coming up too and all these catalysts, right? You have the perfect storm, the perfect moment of catalysts coming together for a Bitcoin bull run. More importantly, Bitcoin's adoption as a serious global asset is definitely happening. We have the halving coming in a month. Efficient market theory would hold that if we all know it's going to happen, then of course it has been priced in already. But paraphrasing a line attributed to Warren Buffett on the dogma that the markets are almost always efficient, but the difference between almost and always is $80 billion to me. Oh man, Warren, huh? So anyway, that even if we think everybody knows something, it doesn't mean that there isn't a ton of money to be made so while cutting the amount of supply in half will naturally cause the price to go up because if demand stays the same and there's just not enough supply being put into the market, that's what's going to happen. Pantera notes that its forecast made after last halving has already been exceeded by 60%, moving their previous analysis of a $35,000 Bitcoin closer to $150,000 Bitcoin. But if you want my opinion on all of this, Pantera needs to up those numbers. Not bullish enough, guys. You're not being bullish enough. Come on, 150K. Of course, that was my initial sort of conservative estimate as well or around that area. But it does make sense as a conservative estimate. The bull case for this cycle, though, could be much higher, although those can be dangerous thoughts when you start thinking it's going to go to 500K or something, and then it doesn't. So be careful about that. Still, though, 150K conservative estimate, I'm here for that. You're probably here for that, too. Seems like a good number, doesn't it? But don't get too caught up on price predictions. They're fun, but they're not predictive at the end of the day. We don't actually know where the price of Bitcoin is going to go. But what is important, what we can pay attention to, what does really matter long term for Bitcoin is everything we've just talked about. The rising layer two scene, the BRC20s and the ordinals and the asset demand from Wall Street and on and on and global adoption, all these important things happening, that long-term is what will drive real value in this market. Thanks for watching.